your truth. Hmm. And what do you mean by that? Harmonizing your thoughts, feelings, and actions. Hmm, I like that. Uh, so your greatest power is in your discovery and understanding of self. That's right. Finding Happy Podcast will help you understand how your thoughts affect your life. Thoughts become feelings, and our feelings create a halo around us. Finding Happy Podcast will help you cultivate favorable outcomes and avoid harboring negative energies. Wow, I like that. Thoughts become feelings, uh, which then become habits that we practice. Finding Happy Podcast will help or give the listener an insight into how what they do is a reflection of their subconscious minds. And it will help you understand how to program your mind to attract what you want consciously. You deserve to thrive in this life. Find your happy. Finding Finding Happy happy Podcast. those of you who weren't hearing me, good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Thursday, August 6th, and it is now time for Finding Happy. Good morning, good morning. If you're joining on YouTube, thank you so much um, for being here. If you're listening on the radio, UME Radio, whether via our app or on Live 365 or TuneIn or Spotify or wherever you're listening or radio.net or radio guide FM, wherever you're listening from, I just want to say welcome, welcome, welcome to Finding Happy. We're going to have a fantastic, phenomenal time today. Uh, One moment, let me just turn this thing off. Yes, there we go. We're going to have a great time today. Today, we're going to be talking about friendships. And I have a very special guest on the show today. And we're going to talk about his uh, brand because Finding Happy is really about connecting and harmonizing our thoughts, feelings, and actions. And we have a segment called called uh, Entrepreneurs Allowed on, on the show where we talk to brand developers, influencers, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders to, to hear their stories and learn from their experiences how to build, um, develop, grow, and advance uh, a brand, our brands, uh, because Owning our labor, owner, having ownership of your thoughts, your feelings, your stories is so essential, it's so important. And so on Finding Happy, we uh, spotlight these, um, these topics and these issues and we talk about them. So I'm so happy to have you here with me today. Thank you for being here and I hope you have a great time. We play country music uh, during the show. And um, I hope you're listening on our radio. If you haven't yet gotten our app, please get our app. It's UME Radio. That is the letter U, M E R A D I O. I also want to give a shout out to our sponsors. Um, this is, of course, a UME Radio production, and um, we're sponsored by UME Digital Digital Media Inc. That's the name of the company, and their website is U the letter U M E Digital I N C dot com. UME Digital Inc. is a digital marketing and multi media company and they help persons establish their brand presence online because sometimes you're present there but you don't have a presence and uh, you mean digital help persons establish it so for example if you want to design your website if you want to do digital marketing if you want to connect with um, um, experts who can help you build your business and establish and launch your business they also have a program called success plan to help those who are um, seeking who needs support in building their business. And hi, Michael, welcome, welcome. I was just introducing the show. It's such a pleasure to have you. And we're going to begin your interview very soon. Uh, yeah. And um, it's so for, for persons who, who want to, uh, for persons who want to, um, establish their business and you need support because entrepreneurs need support in order for you to win, in, in order for you to advance, in order for you to expand. You really need to have a network of people around you who are for you, who will advocate for you, who will support you, who will help you 
navigate the crevices and the corners and those little silent, uh, you call them police, um, those little things on the road, those little silent bumps in entrepreneurship, you know, some little things sometimes that you just you just wouldn't have known because you've never done it before. So you want to have those persons around you who can scaffold you, persons who can hold you, persons who can, when those hard time comes to help you through. And so we we highlight stories of persons who are doing this and people who have advanced in it and people who are doing it. And then they're able to share um, little droplets of wisdom and you get the benefit of that. So that's pretty much what the show is about. Uh, so I just want to welcome you. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, we're just going to play an ad from one of our advertisers and then we're going to come right back uh, to continue our conversation and then we're going to be joined by Michael Tennant. Michael Tennant is a creative strategist. You need to hear what he has to say. It's going to be phenomenal. It's amazing. So let's go to some music. You are listening to You Me Radio and this is Finding Happy with myself, Coach Raquel. And just before our guests come up, I just want to share something with you from the book, if you can see it, Latte for Life. Yes, good nourishment, friendship. A sweet friendship refreshes the soul. That's Proverbs 27, verse 9. A friendship is a present you give yourself. That's a quote from Robert Louis Stevenson. And here's a little story I want to share with you. No one seems to have uh, time for friendship these days. Everyone is overscheduled and there's, and if there's one thing friendship requires, it's time. You have to invite prospective friends over for an evening before you even know whether they are prospective friends. If you seem compatible, you have to keep investing time to allow a friendship to blossom. Finding a friend is as challenging as finding a spouse. There are also various levels of friendship to consider. Casual friends are easy. They are pleasant to, to spend, t- spend an evening with, sorry, go to weekend, uh, weekend events with, and catch up on local gossip with. But these are superficial friends and soon die if someone moves away or their, f- or their children transfer to a different school. They're like a nice dessert, but they aren't very enriching. Then there are some friends that can endure anything, forgive anything or everything. These are few and hard to find. They may grow from casual friendships, but most likely do not because of the huge investment they require. Once acquired, friends like these are precious blessings. You can call these friends at 3 a.m. and they will be there for you. In times of tragedy, they will listen to you cry and cry with you. In good times, you will want to share your joy with them and your happiness will make them happy. Good friends are good nourishment for the heart and soul. Take the time needed to build such friendships and you will never be lonely again. And closing to close this, I just want to share one friendship fact in the same book. <laughs> Friendships not only make you happier, but they can make you healthier too. Creating strong bonds with another person helps lower blood pressure, heart rate, and cholesterol. And uh, those were some good nuggets there. And it's just going to lead us right into um, what we're going to be talking about. Actually curious. I checked it out myself (laughs) with a test from the media kit. Very, very interesting. And I happen to have been a part of uh, a session where I saw it in action. So welcome, 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 Michael. I am so happy to have you with me today. It is such an absolute pleasure to have you. You are muted, so let me unmute you. There you go. Hi. Welcome. How are you doing today? Doing great. I feel oh, that's wonderful. so good after your show intro. I'm just excited to, to be a part of your little curation today. <laughs> yes, this is my place of peace, you know. <laughs> this is where I come to find peace. Where do you go to find peace? Ooh, going right in. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've been thinking a lot about that. I, mm. I, I have a routine that I keep in the morning, uh, and it's starting to like it's starting to get these layers that I'm really excited about. But I get up and I try to meditate before I do anything else. 
you know, I'll sneak a couple peeks at whatever's popping up on my <laughs> phone, but I'll go and get a 20 minute meditation in. Um, I usually write down whatever thoughts come to my mind right away. And lately with the, the weather, I get up pretty early in the morning, but I try to go for a run uh, to get some movement in um, before and get that energy going in my body before. And, and honestly, so that's where I find my peace. Oh, that's wonderful. That's beautiful. I meditate too. It's such a, I found it to be a very empower, mentally empowering tool, meditation. Mm -hmm. Please tell us who is Michael Tennant? I know a little about you already. I know you're a creative strategist. I know you're the brain behind um, Actually Curious, which we're going to be sharing with our audience. It's something that I think is so innovative. I really, really like it. But who are you? Where did you grow up? Tell us a little about your early years, your, your early um, entrepreneurship life and where we are today. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Good tracing back sometimes is it brings up feelings when you, when you, when you quickly pan through the different phases yes. of your life. Um, I'm a, I'm a Jamaican American born here in Crown Heights, Brooklyn, New York. I'm in New York city. Um, my parents are both from Jamaica. They immigrated here in the late seventies. Um, I grew up with three older brothers who are quite a bit different in age gap. Like the closest one was 13 years older than me. So they call me the wash belly. You know that term? <laughs> yes, that's what they call it. Yeah. Yes. I'm that for my dad too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, I grew up in Brooklyn. You know, my parents were able to, I'm grateful, and my brothers always remind me, but they established themselves here. You know, my dad was an, an upholsterer who um, came here on, on like a trade visa and managed to stay. And then he managed to buy his, uh, his company, his upholstery shop from his wow. Italian owner in Crown Heights. I love that. A moment of celebration there. Yes. Yeah, and you just set a really great example of um, making a lot happen with not that much because he only had a, a elementary school education. He, he had to stop working to take care of himself. Mm -hmm. And my mother, I was actually, I was thinking about her and how tough she was on me growing up. And um, my mother's from, they're both from Jamaica. My mom's from, from Hanover, Sandy Bay, if you know, if you've ever heard of it. Yeah. Yes. And um, she just set such a high standard for me, you know. I'm the first of my immediate family to graduate college, but when I think about why I'm doing what I'm doing and, and sometimes, like, the, the tough relationship back and forth that can happen with, like, a mom who wants so much for their, for their kid, um, there's no way I'd be where I am if she didn't set the bar, like, wow. always high. Um, so you can imagine why I'm feeling emotions. I'm really holding. I don't know why I am emotional. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking to myself, Raquel, why are you emotional? Yeah. Like, I, I feel like I, when you said you're the first for college, me yeah. too. Mm. That was me too in my immediate family. Wow. Um, hmm. your story is powerful. Mm. Um, so, I, I mean, interjected in that. Did I stop you? Go ahead. Yeah. Please. Yeah. I mean, I can keep going. I'm trying to just be yeah, conscious of time because I can sometimes okay. really drag Good. out a story. Yeah, um, that's okay. Yes. So, I mean, I can fast forward quite a bit. I mean, we grew up mm -hmm. in Bedside, Brooklyn in the 80s, you know, just to give a, one more like bright spotlight yeah. on my parents, you know, in the 80s, Bedside is not the place with the cafes and uh, it's not the gentrified place that it is now. It was like the center of the crack epidemic. It was the, mm. it was the byproduct of white flight, um, white flight in the sixties because of racial uprising, because of the murder of Dr. Right. Martin Luther King. It's kind of just really, mm. uh, I think it's important to, to remember that that's what, that's what the history of, of places like that are. Yes. Um, and so for them to raise my three older brothers uh, who were teenagers during that time and for them all to survive and leave 
bed stye. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been a journey, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. It's been a journey, and you've been able to 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 be innovative and to use that story to find your pearl in it, right? How, tell us where, well, I kind of have an idea where that innovation come from because of your dad and your past and everything, but how did you find that within yourself to become so innovative to create the um, actually curious card? And even from hearing your story, I can understand the purpose connected to that. Tell us yeah. about it, please. Well, I think just a real quick snapshot. I yes. I went away to boarding school when I was 12 years old and kind of left Brooklyn and went to boarding school. And I feel like that was this first point where I realized I'd left an environment that was all black or it was all black and Hispanic. You know, I was privileged to go to a, to a school that had Caribbean teachers. They taught mm -hmm. us about our history, our heritage. And then when I left, I went to this environment that was um, a very elite school and a very great opportunity and uh, but there were maybe uh, out of 500 students maybe like 10 black kids um, maybe 50 kids of color total um, so it was just a very very different environment and I the reason I, I, I think it's relevant to point out is because this, this first point where I have this huge shift of going from one environment and needing to nice. fit into another environment mm -hmm. for years I would say when people would ask me about that experience, my answer would be, it was a mixed experience. Um, it had its ups and it, it had its downs. But what I'm really grateful for is that it gave me exposure to uh, what the uh, professional world in America and largely you know, in Western society looks like, which is white dominated, and how to navigate and advance and uh, be, be accepted. And, in uh in those environments so with all of that being the youngest being in environments like that at a very young age i think i'm much more keen to want to understand why you arrive at at the way you think or you view this the situation and to kind of just must kind of massage the situation so that we could just continue to build our relationship and what that requires a lot of times is me being able to recognize and acknowledge my own bias um i just very comfortable just accepting fault when i fight when i when i can recognize it when i can see it from mm -hmm. someone's eyes i can say you know okay yeah i see you know i see why i'm wrong so that yes. was the that was the uh almost like strategy insight that went into creating this game is why is it that it's so hard for people to admit when they're wrong or maybe <laughs> not necessarily wrong, but when something they have done consciously or unconsciously has a emotional or perhaps even bigger societal effect? Mm -hmm. Why is that so hard? And, you know, the reason is at least like after all this exploration, I didn't know this then. That was just the, the germ of like wanting to get curious yeah. about, about this. But I believe the reason is, is that, is that one of the most powerful motivators that we don't necessarily recognize, it's that powerful that it stays in this, this box, mm -hmm. uh, is shame. Mm -hmm. We are, as a species, incredibly uh, averse to shame. So we'll mm -hmm. exhibit almost any other emotion versus something that that feels like shame and fault that's in the shame realm. Worse fault that was unintentional or yeah. generational or soci societal. It's like we shortcut right out of that and into something else. Anger. Yes. Why are you blaming me? You know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, joy let's yes. let's that's that's not how the situation is like let's just let's just keep it you know mm -hmm. um so yeah i guess i never really told the link in that way but that's the real the real strategy insight behind yes. actually curious and and over time um you know essentially we found a moment in time that we we wanted to affect we wanted to affect uh so in 2018 
It was two years after uh, President Trump was elected, which was a moment that for, for, for whatever your feelings are about it, it galvanized a lot of people uh, around positive and negative energy. Mm -hmm. um, the type of agency that we're seeing now, um, I don't know, we would see it had 2016 and President not Trump not been, mm -hmm. been elected. It's all like, it's all a ripple. Mm -hmm. So in 2018, in this country, there was this huge response to, uh, to voter turnout, um, really uh, informing voters. Um, and where we found that we thought we might be able to affect is this idea that, okay, there's, there's uh, a lot of information going out, a lot of energy, but it's a, it very much an echo chamber. It's just people who mm -hmm. already have a pretty solidified view um, just talking to one another uh, about what coming together looks like, but there's no real genuine framework for that to happen. So we, we thought that was an opportunity area for us. And uh, we created a campaign, a 360 campaign here in New York City about informing people on how they can use their voice, how they can get out, how they can... Um, uh, influence the hearts of people, how they can use their art and creativity. And because we're, you know, we speak to like a younger audience, like a millennial, a Gen Z audience, mm -hmm. um, how they can use technology. And in it, we, we just kind of serendipitously came to this idea of creating this tactic that we could mm -hmm. give to people um, yes. that would help them to bridge gaps here, leading into a very time-based uh, objective which was at the end of the summer we knew the election was coming and if we could get a tool out that helps people to fight fight the divisiveness against uh that that we ex we exhibit that we see yes um yes. then then that's something we can meaningly meaningfully affect so so that's how we came onto this card game yes i'd like to share some information from your press kit Please. so the mission has always been to spread empathy and help people build well the name of the the, the card is actually curious, just to be clear, actually curious. And you can go to actuallycurious.com and please go to learn about it. I'm just going to share some information with you. The mission has always been to spread empathy and help people build meaningful connections, meaningful connections. As the pandemic forces us into quarantine, this feels more important than ever. I agree. We want to share our game and mission with as many people, especially during these times. We have created a free, oh uh, yeah. So if you go on their website, actuallycurious.com, there's a free PDF that you'll be able to, to have to, to test the game, to see what it's like, like to get a feel for the game. And then you can proceed to getting the actual game because it's amazing. And uh, Yes, yeah, so the, the PDF is available with 18 questions from both editions, Actually Curious, uh, from of Actually Curious. There are two, two editions. And the two editions are, it's Actually Curious, and let me go down for the see if it's there. Like curiosity edition and the happy hour edition. Okay, happy hour. That's what I was trying to remember. Every time I think happy hour, I think having some wine. <laughs> <laughs> so Actually I Curious design. is a yeah. <laughs> Actually Curious is a card game that helps bring people closer together. Uh, we were reflecting that they were reflecting on the divisiveness, as he was saying before, in our country and wanted to do something about it. And they did something positive indeed. The game was created by Curiosity Lab, a group of idealistic marketers who wanted to use consumerism and entertainment to change the way people think and behave. Actually Curious is the only card game, the only one, that uses the science and psychology of emotional connection to teach tools of active listening and empathy. This game means so much to me because those two words right there, I think is just, we've just abandoned it in abandoned um, them in today's world, listening and empathy. Uh, with Actually Curious, we can change the narrative of hate that's taking hold and bring fun and deeper understanding of friends and loved, one, loved ones, home uh, and gatherings across the world. Amazing stuff, uh, Michael. Amazing stuff. 
How have this been received? I'm trying to get to some images to share with them, but you have the card anyway. So the, so Why don't you, you go to up. the Instagram? <laughs> okay, let me go there. <laughs> but I can um, talk in the meantime, and while I'm putting this up, yes, please. Yeah, been, uh, how um, has it been received so far? Well, every time we could get an audience even earlier to like see the game, feel the game, check out the design, understand the concept, they just immediately fall in love and see see the importance of it. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, in 20, after the holidays and, or during the holidays of 2019, I decided to go out on the road and bring this almost door to door to people. Wow. Um, and we, we found so much love. We got our first sort of wave of ambassadors and people who really believed in us. Um, yes. And on that trip, basically between November 22nd, where I left New York City in a rental car and started driving down to Florida, stopping off in cities along the way, mm -hmm. all the way through till March 13th, which was the day that that lockdown began here in the United States. I basically was on the road maybe 80% of the time between New York mm -hmm. and Florida, then across to LA, driving through the deep South, places like Alabama and Louisiana that have a deep history of uh, sort of pretty police brutality and, um, and racial, you know, racial hate crimes essentially. Um, right. But I did that, braved that uh, to get this mission out there. And, and I met allies everywhere every mm. state you know i yes. found my people our people and yes. uh by the time i hit lockdown and serendip serendipitously i was in florida where my parents were are mm -hmm. and because they're good they survived for foreshadowing mm -hmm. they're good amazing um yeah. and thriving um and we experienced yes. something really really amazing together while 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 here so when i arrived in florida the card mm -hmm. game was in some 70 shops across the country. Amazing celebration. Over five months. And yes. um, and I was home. I was there with my with my parents for the first time for that long, three extended months, for the first time <laughs> since I was 12 years yes. old when I left for boarding oh, wow. school. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. What was that experience like for you, Connect reconnecting like It was that? hard. <laughs> yeah? Wow. It was hard, How but did it you was also... Yes, how did, how did you get through it? Well, first of all, it was a great privilege. Um, um, even though it was hard, I, I recognized immediately, like, wow, you know, where else would I, would I be? And Raquel, I didn't mention it. I just, I think it's important, but um, mm -hmm. we don't have to go into it. But my, my family experienced some deep trauma in 2019. Wow. Um, within the 12 months of 2019, we lost uh, a major patriarch in my, in my family. My uncle, John, my aunt, Cindy, passed away. Then my, then my parents lost two of their boys. So out of the four of us, um, in July, my brother Christopher passed. And then in October, my brother, uh, oddly, uh, or Darren, we call him, because, you know, Jamaicans and the two Niam Ting. Um, but Darren, he, he passed away. And, um, mm -hmm. and so for me to be able to, to be in this time of global crisis mm -hmm. in the home of my parents, tough or not, it was an absolute privilege. Um, but, or, but in addition to, um, you know, I'm a grown man now. They're, you know, their traditional Jamaican parents, they want their house a certain way. And when you're in their house, you go by certain <laughs> rules. And, yes. and also, honestly, I was more or less, I was doing this, but I was doing this based on like with loans and investing in my idea um, mm -hmm. from having six figure salaries in the past. What I was doing driving around the country playing this game did not make sense to my parents at all. Yeah. You know, and it, so it's interesting. And then, and, yes, sorry. Uh, I think it's a thing. Like I am Jamaican. I've, I'm an entrepreneur here, and I work with entrepreneurs here. And it's one of the reasons we do. I do what I do. 
I don't think entrepreneurship is understood in its entirety, you know? I think when the successes come, everyone sees that and they're like, yes, this one is doing that or doing that, you know? And they understand if someone puts up a corner shop or a corner store or, um, or someone sells in the arcade, or even if someone is already working in a business place, if there's a f- tangible, physical place to look to, I think then it's understood. But I don't think there is a is a general understanding amongst my people and appreciation for the process right. of becoming successful as an entrepreneur. Well, what, I ahead. feel that you, I, you know what, I love when I get to talk to you because almost every <laughs> word, every sentence phrase that you, that you come out with, just it almost syncs up with what I was thinking and then also takes me yeah. further. But as you were, you were, The thing I was going to say was that what I came to understand on this trip was that they're just, they're afraid for me. Ah, yes. And when you talk about understanding of entrepreneurship and, you know, these days I've been really exploring uh, what privilege, white privilege is and what that looks like and it's different permutations and how I can use my gift Mm -hmm. of communication to gently show that to people. Um, but when you don't know that you're going to have another chance, ideas that seem really risky or abstract or, you know, and and without a lot of exposure into some of these different fields and such, yeah, that induces fear. That's hard to support when you want, you, you want, uh, Raquel, you want Michael to be safe. Mm-hmm. And it's and it's such a contradiction too, and I understand where they are, but, but it's such a contradiction too, because we are a people of faith, mm. you know? So it, it can be its own contradiction. And I do understand it because like I said, I work with entrepreneurs and I think, I think the parents even have a harder time if, if that person was already in corporate and then leave the fear goes up even higher, <laughs> you know, it goes up even higher because especially if you've start, you've, you've displayed certain achievements already and, and it's that they're, they're thinking, no, oh my gosh, you're going to risk it. But I understand it because of their story and where they're coming from and the challenges they faced, you know, so I, I'm happy that you have a game such as this. And I want to read some comments that I'm seeing on Instagram. If you don't mind, I want to share this. Somebody said peace. Love that, you know, three hearts and peace that it brings them peace. Isn't that powerful? Someone else said love. And then someone says the practice of communicating with plant spirits. You should read the question that they're responding to. Oh, there was a question. It's in the, it's in the Uh, photo. Yes. It says, what will you share with humankind? Ah, uh, there we go. Are you in the, oh, that's something different. Uh, my heart and my kind, my kindness connected to both. The practice of communicating with plant spirit, love, peace. For me, the peace just resonates when I saw it, you know, and, and, and please check out Actually Curious. It's at actually C underscore R I O U S. Actually at actually C underscore R R I O U S actually curious. You should check it out. It's amazing. You've managed to put together here and, and your story. Um, this question right here, how do you love just even just, even just asking myself that and processing it and, and going through, you know, sometimes my last episode, I spoke about feeling single, living single. Mm-hmm. And I woke up that day feeling single and I had to go through uh, how I love and what love means to me and the thought of all of that and even what a relationship would mean would mean to me. So this, this is just amazing. And it says, it's a bonus question. How do you feel? Ah, oh, that's even more powerful. How do you feel loved? These are powerful questions, Michael. Where do they come from? Oh, wow. Um, yeah, I mean, so we've done quite a bit of research on uh, just trust building. Um, and questions that help people, uh, you know, 
question structure that's not leading and not colored. Um, and we also, in, 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 uh, we, we look into important issues that, that matter to us. We have eight pillars uh, that include diversity and mental health and um, sustainability among them. And we, just, we created a deck that it progresses in, um, yes. in sure, yes. intimacy. So essentially the original deck, which is again called the Curiosity Edition, um, yes. symbolically you have a gender neutral face. This could be mm -hmm. he, she, they. Uh, the eyes open up progressively. On the top, it says "Love is love is blank." Get you kind mm -hmm. of already into this mode of exploration and curiosity. And then the cards themselves. There are four colors, with blue being the lightest. These are questions that should be easy to ask a stranger. Uh, mm -hmm. And then go you go up to green to yellow to pink. So the only real rule that we're like, hey, have fun with these, remix mm -hmm. it use it to facilitate your, your group or your family gathering, like have fun, like be yes. playful. But the only yes. rule is like, try to start with, no, not try, start with the lowest, the lightest level. And you can see the mm -hmm. eyes are closed. That's because, you know, you're just getting to know each other. Right. And then only go like building up after, rapport. after you've yeah. done one from the level before. This way you're, mm -hmm. you're really honoring the space you're yeah. allowing the group to build in vulnerability together yeah. uh, before you get into the, to the, you know, these, these tough questions. The pink like ones. The pink ones. <laughs> the, pink yeah, one, where, the pink ones are the tough ones. Where the eyes are. A eyes lot of people have open. the tendency just because, you know, <laughs> depending on the personality style, people are like, yeah. oh, let's go to the pink ones right away. I'm like, you know, <laughs> that's the same person probably that's like talking over everybody in the meeting and, <laughs> not listening actively is like oh you know yes. it's about like i think really... it's powerful sorry mm -hmm. i thought you no. stopped i think it's powerful that you're looking at listening because um i'm finding that even for myself i did a whole episode on listening and, and understanding the value of listening i think listening is respecting it is respecting the other person and even i have a challenge with listening you know and i think it's the the for me the fact that this this, this game that you've created has that in it, listening and empathy. I think it's a big thing. And as I hear your story, I can understand why. You know, I, I, I'm a person of purpose. I'm a coach. So I can see that your, your story led you to purpose. Like all of that you had to go through, all that loss, all that pain, um, you know, your process. Uh, it, it really, I can see how it brought you to actually curious, you know, and, and it's such a powerful, powerful tool that I know will help people because if we could listen to understand more, we'd be so much more powerful. And, and as you spoke about shame, and I liked that you shared it too, because we look at pain, right? And, but, but it's the shame the shame sometimes we don't look at. And, and you have a point, you know, and I, I don't think I really looked at it like that before. Uh, people go to defense real fast. And I was wondering, like, I've even asked persons who I work with, who I love, like, what makes, what makes it that I say something I'm experiencing with you? You, you? We're having an experience. And I share with you that this is my experience with you about something you did or said. And you go straight to defense. You haven't heard me to understand me yet, because if you heard me to understand me, then you'd realize I'm not speaking about you. I'm speaking about my experience. But we jump straight to because even just the thought of the shame and the pain of being wrong or having been um, accused of whatever they think they're being accused of is so it's so confronting that they become it, it, it's almost like it, they don't they reject it before. Well, it's a conception of thought they're rejecting it from that point. Have you experienced through your research um, any of any pushback with regards to uh, the questions that you had or the way the game is developed or you know how people feel about it? Have you have you received any negative responses that were influential to the success think, that you now have? I think the more guarded an individual is is the more uncomfortable this game will, will will make them and 
And like I said, I, I alluded to before, there have been situations where people have gotten either entered the group late and where they're already up into the pink cards and that has caused friction mm, in the group. Yeah. And I, I actually wasn't there, but a friend had brought it and said like, oh man, like a huge arguments broke out. At, mm-hmm. the, at the end and it was actually and I was like what was the scenario I'm picturing like a conservative <laughs> and, a, and a and a liberal or like a white person and a black person it was it was um two uh Haitian Americans and uh it was not a response to the question it was like it dovetailed into another discussion and it was around you know, spare the rod, spoil the child around beating mm, children. Ah, and they got nice. into a really heavy debate around it. And so I was like, oh man, this was early. And I was like, oh man, <laughs> I think I ruined somebody's party. Oh no, like that sending- disruption is good <laughs> because your, your, your game is a disruption. It disrupts the thoughts. Right. And that's why I think it's so powerful because disruption is good. Because that's also why we created the the happy hour edition. The next day, <laughs> and the, it, it, is the happy hour edition the pink? So it's it's actually so this color oh, is called magenta. It's like okay. a like a hot hot pink. <laughs> so you know yeah. you know the happy hour is over there as soon as you see it on the shelf. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes. But, I um, love it. Oh my god! So it's basically lighter than than all. You can't you can't see this. Oh, there you can. It's yes, lighter there. than all the all the other colors. So it's something uh, that like, yeah. let's say, you know, you want to have thoughtful conversation. Mm-hmm. You want to introduce like maybe because this is the way I use it, too, is if I know there are people in the group that I and I'm, I'm paying attention, I'm listening to myself, I'm feeling as there's some discomfort. I'm then looking around to see like, OK, all right, these these half the room is really nervous here. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So to me, that's the perfect opportunity if I'm facilitating yes. to spend maybe a couple cards here. Mm-hmm. So people learn like, oh, okay, these are questions and like, they're not that bad before we go, you know, before we go up. But they yes. are all still very thoughtful. And in truth, when I was ideating these questions, yes. I, the, one of the first kind of creative strategy processes that I did was take each of the 52 questions out of the curiosity edition and just did a rapid brainstorm around, okay, if you wanted to kind of touch, touch this area, but you wanted to do it in a more light and playful way or a way that gets the story about the positive versus the potentially like sad backstory that happened. And how would you frame it that way? How would you do that? And that was one of the first, we did some like 200 something questions just by doing that, you know? Yes. Awesome. Um, okay, let, let's let's sample and see if I can answer some. So just you, to just show the how you start it works. At the happier? Okay, so just so we you want to just do rapid style. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm game. <laughs> okay, how about you want to do it a little bit different than we played the um the last time? Sure. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. Sure. You're on the hot seat. Okay. I am the game master. I'm, I'm your yes. I'm your um, concierge for for the for the <laughs> yes. time. And so what we're yes. going to do is we're going to show we're going to show the listeners how to yes. listen to themselves because this is such an important part of empathy is getting a better understanding of yourself. yourself like yes. You know when that shame comes up and you start to be defensive like it's a two-way be street. Aware of it. Right? Yes. So what I'd like you to do is I'm just going to pull the question at random and I want you to mm-hmm. real quick show the listeners what like a body like a an, a check-in my emotional check-in might look like. So just okay. say like, oh, that question makes me feel this in my body, whatever you feel. And emotionally, right. it makes me feel X, Y, Z. And then okay. answer the question. Awesome. Cool? How's that sound? Yes. All right. Sounds deep breath. Great. They say it takes 10,000 hours to become an expert. If you could instantly complete 10,000 hours of one skill, what would it be? It's how's it feel? <laughs> it feels uh, how does it feel? Curious, is that a feeling? That's not a feeling. <laughs> it feels uh, warm. It feels, it feels okay. It feels, um, I don't feel happy or sad. 
I feel safe. I feel safe, yeah. Um, emotionally, it made me introspect. I immediately went to look at myself. Like it immediately gave me introspection. Like I'm now like, this is what happened when you say it because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a visual person. Like when someone says something, I see it. And the, the weirdest thing is immediately after you asked me the question, I started seeing almost like in the back of my head, like a, a dark space, like a hollow space. That, it's weird. Like it's a dark space and it was empty and hollow, but peaceful, but peaceful. Um, what I would want to create, what came to my mind immediately or what, what, what I would want to do, the skill I'd like to, to, to develop is Become success coaching. Yeah, success coaching. Um, I never knew I could love it this much, but I really love success coaching, helping people get over whatever obstacles, personal obstacles are in their way. That, that's the skill I would go to. Yeah. yeah. I love that. That was such an interesting thing. It was so interesting. It was so interesting for me. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's one of the yeah. new styles, one of the new gameplay styles I've been using, especially yeah. when I have like a great opportunity to go one on one with someone mm -hmm. um, and maybe even something that could be interesting to, to, to test out in the in the coaching practice. Yes, um, I think I think that's good for that. Yes, absolutely. I think like for me, um, it's really helpful for brainstorming or for um, journaling if I'm just like, mm, mm -hmm. does this make me feel what is what? What do I think? So, all right. So, yeah. I don't know. We only have like a, a bit more we time. We have so nine minutes to go. <laughs> do this how you want. We can go up a level. Yes. You direct. We can me. do one more question. Yes, one more. One more. Yes. You want to just go up to blue? Sure. <laughs> if we do it fast, maybe we can squeeze in two. Okay, go we'll ahead. Do that just ra like yes. no more than like a minute. Yes. Is okay. it possible when you're doing it to show the question so they can yeah, see it? I will. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Yes, I'm Same ready. Same exercise. Ready? Yes. Yes. Who is someone from your childhood who shaped who you are today and why? Oh, my dad. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, my dad. You want to share some of the feelings with us? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm, yes, that was unexpected. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, my gosh. Sorry. That's okay, Mama. <laughs> Find you happy. Sometimes it uh, comes with a little bit of tears. Yeah. I love my dad. <laughs> oh. mm. I'm sorry. I can feel <laughs> it. You don't even have to describe it. We can feel it. Um, mm. I love my dad. He taught me to think. He taught me to be intentional. He taught me to love. He taught me <sighs> Oh God, I'm sorry. <laughs> I never expected this. Um it's beautiful. Yeah. Um my father. <sighs> I'm sorry. Um, no need to apologize. He was the most broken person I ever met. And he taught me. How to touch the the most painful part of oneself, the most broken, the most imperfect, and then to own it. I'm sorry, I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. Oh, Raquel. Taught me that it was okay to be broken, but to own it. He taught me honesty. 
to be honest with myself and not to believe my own lies, but to be honest with myself, you know? God, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> We're just in the blue saying. level too, Raquel. I know, right? <laughs> oh. Oh, uh, you know, the thing is, is we don't yeah. often slow down that much to yeah. like really check in with our feelings. True. Like and I, I don't think I've really mourned him. Yeah. I, I haven't taken the time to because I feel like if I don't, then then he's not really gone. Yeah. <laughs> that is. So I haven't really. And that kind of forced me to. To go back to accept that he wasn't here that mm. he isn't here so that 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 was that was physically painful for me i'm sorry i'm sorry love yeah but thank you because yeah he was just an exceptional human being just so broken and just so i just think he was so real you know so yeah. Huh. Yeah. Um, thank you for that. A couple that. things. A couple things that it brings up for me um, is one. I have eight nieces and nephews who just lost their fathers uh, to different oh. dads, and and I just it makes me really think about my two two of my nieces in in a major way. Um, yeah. Who I'm just I'm doing I'm trying my best to like bridge my gap with that relation those relationships, but I know. Yeah. I know that we have time and that I'm ready and willing to continue to like wade in the difficulty till, till we figure it out. And, but then I also think about some of the feelings that I had come up for me right when I was in the depths of the trauma. And I had a wonderful group of men that I have a, a, we do a, a, a group where we meet once a week and we really do exactly, honestly, exactly what we just did. We force each other yeah. to slow down and really check in with our yeah. feelings and not just gloss over it with work or whatever. Well, they led me through a healing journey. And in that healing journey, I saw my grandfather and my great grandfather weeping. I never met these men. These men were de- dead long before I was born. And mm-hmm. it just, it brought me to a sense of spiritual awareness of Mm -hmm. that brokenness and that trauma, not just in my lineage, but within black men globally. And you think about just like the spiritual and historic weight of slavery and the psychological Mm. subjugation that has been exhibited on black people off on and off of the African continent. Mm -hmm. That doesn't just go away until people break it. Right. Right. And I think sometimes that is perhaps why we, I don't think it's suppression, but it's, it's almost like, I think it's, it has the potential to be so paralyzing when you think about it, that we say, I'm going to put you down here for right now because I can't spend time with you here right now. Because if I do, it's going to cripple me and I don't have the kind of environment or support system that would allow for me to deal with you because I need to eat my basic needs. I'm so tied and so shackled to my basic needs that my emotional needs have to be put on hold because if I break down or if I have to go through this, there's nothing to hold me up. So I have to put it down there. And it's like every day you have to get up and remember that it's put down there. It, I can I can see how an anger, a hurt, a resentment, pain just build up over time, over time. And shame accelerate, you know, and just build up over time. And, Raquel, and, and so you right. can't just put that down. Yeah, we, I don't think we can. And like when I think about my two brothers who both passed away before the age of 50, and I think about the emotional weight and the physical toll on the body. It's part of my life work to allow people 
the space help try to just play my part because I'm just one person. I'm not trained as a psychologist or anything of, of that nature, but I've seen people be able to visit something that is stored in their body, that's stored on their yes. heart, that's stored on mm -hmm. their organs. Yes. And, and, and I think out. something like this, yes, it does. Because I think, I think one of the most powerful thing I think with this is that it can trigger an awareness that I need to get help. I, it has that potential because sometimes when that is just put down like there, we become so um, conditioned to, to move on without dealing with it that sometimes it's going to take something, a disruptor to say, hey, remember I'm here and, and, and perhaps check in, especially right after, because for some of us, like we, 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 we are shackled to this basic need and then we, we find success. And the things that we had, the voices inside us that we quiet, we quieted when we were shackled to basic needs and trying to pursue something. When we become successful, sometimes we don't go back there because we don't know how do I bridge the gap now? How do I go back there to pick up the voices as silenced, to pick up the pain that I had down there? And I think something like this helps them know how. It gives them a pathway, you know, and 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 where you have the the the. the easier than you know and it goes up so you can start at a, at a rate where you can take your time and proceed with caution i think it's fantastic um uh, i think it's fantastic uh thank you, thank you. It, it it's um that was such an empowering experience for me it really was and i and i really hope it was for persons and if you're on youtube talking to me i'm not looking at it and i'm so sorry but i will respond eventually um michael we're so happy to have you here any advice for um a brand builder a new brand builder a new entrepreneur somebody who's just starting out any advice for them yeah um my advice is slow down and listen to yourself uh try to get really grounded in why this is important to you sometimes that exploration might even illuminate why it's not important and that'll save you a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of energy um so it's you know my philosophy which i've now tried and now uh i'm getting success in it on my own i've done it for businesses but now for myself is slow down listen to yourself figure out what your values are and let that guide you wonderful and this is this is i'm um, still getting used to uh, plugging things, plugging myself, promoting myself in this way. But this is something I've focused on so much Please. that yes. um, actually very recently uh, on Thrive Global, um, mm -hmm. I published an article uh, about listening to your values. So it's called, mm -hmm. it, if you Google, is your Michael Tennant and values you'll, and, and Thrive, you'll probably find it. But Raquel, maybe yes. you can also share it in the I will, in the I will. Chat. But the, the article mm -hmm. is, um, is your world on fire? It's time to assess your values. There's time to find your values. And then I have a workshop uh, that is on the Actually Curious site, Actually Curious slash workshops, which can guide you through an, an exercise to find your values. So mm -hmm. that, that's, mm -hmm. that's what I do. And, um, awesome. Oh, it's amazing. Find your, is your there support. anything else? Yeah, yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to share? Um, give us everywhere we can find you, yeah. whatever you want us to do, anything. Please, please, right please ahead. do follow us on Instagram. That's our main social yes. media channel. Actually mm -hmm. Curious with the U and Curious is an underscore. But if you type in Actually Curious, you'll find it. It'll come up, yes. Um, go to actuallycurious.com, download the tools, start to use it. You become immediately... Uh, another one of our ambassadors on the front line of this movement to spread empathy. And mm -hmm. if you're able, um, support us by buying the yes, game, gifting the do. game, bringing it into your workplaces. Um, mm -hmm. We do help, uh, while you can, you can do self-guided workshops, if your organization has the means and, and can help us further the mission by being an advocate to your, or your, your org, we'd be more than happy to find time with you to customize a workshop for your needs. So mm -hmm. pretty much 
we're here to try to enable this movement to spread empathy for the whole spectrum globally. And we're, we're hoping that, you know, if you're moved by this, that you'll, you'll help us. And I think this is good for entrepreneurs just to get a, a card for yourself, because I plan to do that. Just get a card for yourself and just check in with yourself because as an entrepreneur, you're going out there, you're influencing people, you're impacting people. And um, to be effective as a leader, you need to check in with yourself. So please, um, his name is Michael Tennant. He's fantastic. He's phenomenal. We are so happy to have had you here with us. Thank you for the process. Thank you for the purpose. Thank you for pursuing the purpose. Thank you for gifting the world with this amazing um, opportunity to tap in and to, to tap into listening. And I, and I love that it's black owned, you know, uh, <laughs> I, I just love that because I know we're so creative and we're so innovative. We're so, there's so much skill among us, you know, and sometimes we never get to manifest it. So I, I am proud of you if I'm able to be, and I'm very happy. I'm Thank very you. happy. I just want to share this from how successful people think, uh, before we go, sorry. Um, and it says, listen intentionally. An excellent way to broaden your experience is to listen, uh, to listen to someone who has expertise in an area where you don't. I search for such opportunities, the writer says. One year, I spoke to about 900 coaches and scouts at the Senior Bowl, sorry, yeah, at the Senior Bowl, where graduating football players participate in their last college game. I had the opportunity, along with my son-in-law, Steve Miller, to have dinner with NFL head coaches, Dave uh, Onestead uh, and Butch Davis. It's not often that you get such an opportunity. So I asked them questions about teamwork and spent a lot of time uh, listening to them. At the end of the evening, as Steve and I were walking to our car, he said to me, John, I bet you asked those coaches a hundred questions tonight. If I'm going to learn and grow, I replied, I must know what questions to ask and know how to apply the answers to my life. Listening has taught me a lot more than talking. When you meet with people, it's good to have an agenda so that you can learn. It's a great way to partner with people who can do things you can't. Big picture thinking thinkers recognize that they don't know lots of things. They frequently ask penetrating questions to enlarge their understanding and thinking. If you want to become a better big picture thinker, then become a good listener. And I want to thank you, Michael, because your card game empowers us to be good listeners. Thank you. You've been listening to Finding Happy. Uh, please uh, follow us at Yumi Radio everywhere, or you can go to umeradio.com. That's the letter U-M-E-R-A-D-I-O. Thank you so much for being here, Michael. It's been such an absolute pleasure talking with you this morning. Do enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Wow, that was amazing. That was amazing. Thank you all so much for being here with us today. It, um, it has been interesting to say the least to say the least and as we go to to close the show i just want to remind you that you're not alone you are not alone it doesn't matter what you're going through what you've been through what this life may bring you are not alone okay you're not alone i'm going to play a song let me see I want to play, yeah, Love Wins by uh, Carrie Underwood. You're listening to Yumi Radio. This is Finding Happy, and I'm Coach Raquel. Please join me next Thursday at 10 a.m. for another fantastic hour. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you were able to process. I hope you had a good time. I hope you, I hope you had some me time this morning listening. I hope you had some me time as you listened. Um, I hope you were able to introspect and process. And, if, and, and I hope that the, the ultimate outcome will be that you feel good about yourself. Your greatness is in your brokenness. Don't you forget that. Uh, you, me, radio, and here are some reminders. Own your truth. Hmm. And what do you mean by that? Harmonizing your thoughts, feelings, and actions. 
Mm, I like that. Uh, so your greatest power is in your discovery and understanding of self. That's right. Finding Happy Podcast will help you understand how your thoughts affect your life. Thoughts become feelings and our feelings create a halo around us. Finding Happy Podcast will help you cultivate favorable outcomes and avoid harboring negative energies. Wow, I like that. Thoughts become feelings, uh, which then become habits that we practice. Finding Happy Podcast will help or give the listener an insight into how what they do is a reflection of their subconscious mind. And it will help you understand how to program your mind to attract what you want consciously. You deserve to thrive in this life. Find your happy. Finding Finding Happy Happy Podcast. Podcast.